Michael Myers is a fictional character from the Halloween series of slasher films. He first appears in 1978 in John Carpenter's Halloween as a young boy who murders his elder sister, Judith Myers. Fifteen years later, he returns home to Haddonfield to murder more teenagers. In the original Halloween, the adult Michael Myers, referred to as the shape in the closing credits, was portrayed by Nick Castle for most of the film and substituted by Tony Moran and Tommy Lee Wallace in the final scenes. The character was created by Deborah Hill and John Carpenter and has appeared in 10 films, as well as novels, multiple video games, and several comic books. The character is the primary antagonist in the Halloween film series, except Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which is not connected in continuity to the rest of the films. Since Castle, Moran, and Wallace put on the mask in the original film, six people have stepped into the same role. Castle, George P. Wilbur, and Tyler Maine are the only actors to have portrayed Michael Myers more than once, with Maine being the only one to do so in consecutive films. Michael Myers is characterized as pure evil, both directly in the films, by the filmmakers who created and developed the character over nine films, and by random participants in a survey. In the first two films, Michael wears a Captain Kirk mask that is painted white. The mask, which was made from a cast of William Shatner's face, was originally used in the 1975 horror film The Devil's Reign. Michael Myers made his literary debut in October 1979 when Curtis Richards released a novelization of the film. The book follows the events of the film but includes references to the Festival of Samhain. A prologue provides a possible explanation for Michael's murderous impulses, telling the story of Enda, a disfigured Celtic teenager who butchers the druid princess Deirdre and her lover as revenge for rejecting him, the king subsequently has his shaman curse and his soul to walk the earth reliving his crime for eternity. It is later revealed that Michael Myers suffers nightmares about Enda and Deirdre, as did Michael's great-grandfather before shooting two people to death at a Halloween harvest dance in the 1890s. The novel shows Michael's childhood in more detail, his mother voices concern over her son's antisocial behavior shortly before he murders Judith. Dr. Loomis notices the boy's effortless control and manipulation of the staff and patients at Smith's Grove during his incarceration. Later in the story, Michael stalking of Lori and her friends is depicted as more explicitly sexual than was apparent in the film, with several references to him having an erection. Oh, Michael returned to the world of literature with the 1981 adaptation of Halloween 2 written by Jack Martin, it was published alongside the first film sequel, with the novel following the film events, with an additional victim, a reporter, added to the novel. The final novelization to feature Michael was Halloween 4, released October 1988. The novel was written by Nicholas Grabowski, and like the previous adaptations, follows the events of Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Over a four-month period, Berkeley Books published three young adult novels written by Kelly O'Rourke. The novels are original stories created by O'Rourke, with no direct continuity with the films. The first, released on October 1, 1997, titled The Screen Factory, follows a group of friends who set up a haunted house attraction in the basement of Haddonfield City Hall, only to be solved and killed by Michael Myers while they are there. The Old Myers Place is the second novel, released December 1, 1997, and focuses on Mary White, who moves into the Myers house with her family and takes up residence in Judith Myers' former bedroom. Michael returns home and begins stalking and attacking Mary and her friends. O'Rourke's final novel, The Madhouse, was released on February 1, 1998. The Madhouse features a young girl, Christine Ray, who joins a documentary film crew that travels to haunted locations, they are currently headed to Smith Grove Mental Hospital. The crew is quickly confronted by Michael Myers. The character's first break into comics came with a series of comics published by Brian Pulido's Chaos. Comics The first, simply titled Halloween, was intended to be a one-issue special, but eventually two sequels spawned, Halloween 2, The Blackest Eyes and Halloween 3, The Devil's Eyes. All of the stories were written by Phil Nutman, with Daniel Farron's writer for Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers assisting on the first issue, David Brewer and Justin Yano worked on the illustrations. Tommy Doyle is the main protagonist in each of the issues, focusing on his attempts to kill Michael Myers. 
The first issue includes backstory on Michael's childhood, while the third picks up after the events of the film Halloween H20. In 2003, Michael appeared in the self-published comic One Good Scare, written by Stephen Hutchinson and illustrated by Peter Fielding. The main character in the comic is Lindsay Wallace, the young girl who first saw Michael Myers alongside Tommy Doyle in the original 1978 film. Hutchinson wanted to bring the character back to his roots, and away from the lumbering Jason clone the film sequels had made him. Do you like Michael Myers? Tell us your thoughts in the comments.